r slash no sleep. Posted by u slash archives h. I work for a company that recovers strange artifacts. Workers must follow specific rules to survive. Episode 1. A special thanks for. At Lionel Isaac Flores. And. At Venom56 for you Patreon support. We are working on new Patreon only videos. You'll be notified. I am sure you will enjoy. My name is Kyron Gray. I work at this place called Company 7, or at least I think I do. Ever since I started working here I started noticing an odd similarity running through the cases. Recently, I feel as if I'm being watched, and strange things are getting more frequent. Entry 1, Faces. Hello. Uh, well, my doctor told me to write this stuff down. I know, pretty cliche, but this isn't what you think it is. My name is Kyron. Kyron Gray. I work for an organization called Company 7. Chances are, you've heard of it because it doesn't exist, at least, not in your world. Sort of? I've been here for a few months. I should explain what we do here at Company 7. First of all, it isn't actually called Company 7. It doesn't actually have a name, but when I was recruited, everyone called it that. According to my supervisor we call it that because it's the seventh iteration since it was founded. Our job is to seek out the unnatural and take it away, back into our warehouses. Anyway, Dr. Magnus full name Quinn Magnus wants me to write about my missions in this logbook. They said it would take my stress away. Not that I trust them Quinn always has this strange look in his eyes, like there's just something there pressing, trying to escape his eyes. But whenever I try and focus on it too long, Quint notices and they find a distraction. My mission today was at an abandoned museum. The location I can't tell, but it was one hell of a place. When we got there, I was with my partner, Mitch Lavaralus. He's a cool guy, but he always smells like flowers. I think he's been with the company for a year. The museum had been dropped into a sinkhole and according to our mission, we were supposed to search and find a certain painting. However, my supervisor, a woman named Gail Shard didn't tell me what it would look like. I said, then how will we recover it? You'll know what it is when you see it, Gail replied. So there we were, me and Mitchell. The sinkhole wasn't actually deep, so after a bit of climbing we made it onto the ground. Before we entered, we reviewed the rules and what we could do. 1. Do not talk to anyone except you and your partner. You may encounter a pale thin man with a fedora. Do not talk to him. If you see him, make sure to ignore him. Do not acknowledge his presence at all. If you accidentally get his attention, go to the nearest room and lay on the floor for 10 seconds while staring at the ceiling. Do not blink. If the man remains after this has been completed, leave the building immediately and we will have you return at a later date. 2. One of you must remain in the security room. The cameras will be working. Do not question this. You will contact each other by radio every five minutes and follow this script. The person at security will say, what a great day, don't you agree? And the other will respond with, yes, the fox is hunting the rabbit. 3. Occasionally, you may hear strange noises in rooms with closed doors. Do not enter these rooms if you hear noises. Only enter rooms with no noise. You may enter a room once the noises have stopped. If you enter a room where you have previously heard a noise in and see mannequins, Close the room and initiate Banshee protocol. 4. Whenever you enter a room, close the door behind you and make sure it is closed. If you are in security, lock that door. You may hear knocking on the doors and windows. Do not open it unless you have communicated the script to ensure it is your partner. You may hear a voice that sounds like your partner begging to be let in. Do not let it in. 5. If you are at security, track your partner using the camera. You may see an old woman sitting on a bench and looking straight into the camera. Do not let your partner enter the room with the old woman. If she has not left the room or disappeared after 30 seconds of you noticing her, turn off the cameras and turn it on again. She will be gone, but be sure to check the other cameras for her. 6. When you secure the painting, do not touch IT. If you touch the painting, you must report this to your supervisor, and you will be expelled from Company 7. 7. Good luck. Well, I said, this sounds simple enough. Simpler than my last case. Mitchell commented. I remembered what Mitchell told me what happened to him before our case. He had been tasked with investigating reports of a crawling dark figure that appeared in people's windows and smiled. Sometimes I wonder how I got from investigating the disappearance of people in a carnival to this job. But I like this job, it's unique. The cases are always strange and unusual. I've encountered human-like things with a clay sphere for a head, so that is strangely better than just arresting a criminal. 
we entered the museum and played a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. I lost, which meant I had to search for this painting myself. We found the guard room, activated our radios, and we began to mission. The first thing I noticed was how loud the click of the lock was when Mitchell locked the guard room, separating us. Let's test the script, I said. What a great day, don't you agree? Mitchell announced. Yes, the fox is hunting the rabbit, I replied. I entered the first room, a gallery filled with statues of people. They weren't mannequins, luckily, so I didn't need to do anything for the room. The last time I encountered mannequins it wasn't exactly good. I closed the door behind me and continued walking through the room, searching for a painting. No painting to be found. The first thing I noticed when I looked up was that the statues has moved ever slightly. The rules never mentioned anything about this, so I hoped it meant nothing. Then I heard it a small tapping at the door behind me. Hey Kyron! A voice shouted, muffled. It sounded exactly like Mitchell. Could you open the door? I forgot to give you something. I radioed Mitchell and we did the script. I told him about the voice. Well, I'm up in security. As soon as he said that, the voice stopped. I went into the next room and closed the door behind me. There wasn't anything in this one but a bunch of old empty boxes and clay figurines. I noticed a painting, and since I couldn't touch it, I put my gloves on and handled it. It didn't seem special at all. I decided to leave it there and look in the next room. I opened the door to see a hallway. I turned back to close it, but when I looked back at the hallway, I saw him. The pale man with a fedora. He was staring out the window, looking into dirty glass. I made my best to ignore him and continued down the hallway. I looked back when I opened the door to the next room, and luckily, he was gone. I sighed in relief at that. But then I saw something in the dirty glass. I closed the door and went back in the hallway. I looked through the dirt and I swear I saw a face. It was barely a face, and more like a melted image pretending to be a face. It might have been dust, but I swear I saw it blank. I ignored this and went into the next room. What a great day, don't you agree? Mitchell announced. Yes, the fox is hunting the rabbit, I replied, searching the room as I did. Good. Anything happen? It was only then I realized only five minutes had passed. Nothing much, but something that sounded like you just begged for me to let you in. Mitchell explained. He told me something was chasing him. Huh, cool. I finished my search and was about to open the next room's door when Mitchell told me to stop. I did, and we did the script once more. Don't go in, he ordered. That old woman's in there. We both silently counted for 30 seconds. Is she still there? I asked. Yeah, let me turn the cameras on and off, Mitchell answered. A second passed. You can enter. The room was filled with paintings. It turned out, my supervisor was right. I felt one of the paintings call to me, like it wanted me to touch it. I looked around and found it. The painting was small, enough to fit in the palm of my hand. It was of seven faces of babies that were melting, and frozen in this scream of death. When I touched it, I felt something tug at my gloves, like the cursed painting wanted me to touch it. Before I could be tricked into touching it, I stuffed it into my jacket pocket. I now made the journey back, and the next time Mitchell called, I told him I had recovered the painting. I reached the first room and something felt. Off. There was a door where there wasn't before. I heard something muffled come from it, and I listened closer. It seemed like children crying and another voice of someone arguing. It felt very familiar, yet I couldn't place it. I followed the rules and pretended I didn't hear anything. I found the security room, knocked on the door, did the script, and me and Mitchell were reunited. So that went nicely, I said. No injuries. Mitchell laughed as we returned to our car. A few weeks after this mission I heard a rumor go around that a worker from storage unit committed suicide her body was found burnt. The rumor was that this worker was new and ignored instructions on handling a painting correctly. The rumor also told me that they complained that they could never sleep because they kept hearing taps on their windows and seeing this melted face of a kid through it. I think what's worse is the fact that they supposedly live on the third floor of an apartment. I think that's all I'll write for today. I might write another entry tomorrow, but I've got to check up with that creepy Quint Magnus. Kyron Gray Support Reddit Incorporated on Patreon for weekly one extra series and early access to the content. You will find link in description.